So now we want to do generic foreign keys. And to me, the best way to actually do generic foreign keys is to understand exactly what's going on with it and how it generally works by introducing content type. So let's go ahead and jump into the Python shell. So Python manage.py shell. And we're going to go ahead and do from django.contrib.content types.models. We're going to import the content type. Okay, so if we go content type dot objects dot all, we can see literally every app and model that's installed into our project, right? So installed apps happen on all these, make migrations happened, and migrate has happened. All of these content types are available to us to grab at any point. Now, notice that I only imported content type. I didn't import anything else. So what I'm gonna do now is actually grab the category model, that is this foreign key right here, and I'm gonna grab ID being one. So we'll go ahead and say ID equals to one, and category, well, what does that equal to? Well, we actually have to grab it. And to do this, we're gonna go ahead and say uh, cat underscore type, as in category type, as in category content type, is gonna be equal to content type dot objects dot get, our app label, which is often just the app name itself, and this is categories, and then the actual model itself, which in our case is category, right? So it, of course, if we had different app names, like we had playlist, this would be playlists, and then this one would be playlist. This would give me a content type of, well, the categories and category. So in order for me to actually get the model class itself, it's incredibly easy. We do cat underscore type dot model underscore class. And we initialize that, and there we go. That is literally the category model, which means that I can actually say category equals to that model. And now I can actually do category.get, or rather category objects.get ID equaling to one or whatever ID we want to pass. And that shows me that, right? And I can also do the query set, so category.objects and dot all. This is incredibly powerful because now what I can do is I can actually reference the content type as my foreign key and then reference the ID of the actual object I'm trying to associate to any given model. This is actually gonna come into handy in a big way with our, our actual tags. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And I will say that this is also in the actual content types documentation for Django, right? So if you look up the content types framework, you will see almost exactly this example but I think it, it takes some getting used to, uh, especially with the introduction of foreign keys in general, and now we're doing a more generic foreign key, something that's just a lot more flexible. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit out of the Python shell, and we're gonna go ahead and run python manage.py start app, and I'm gonna call it tags. Okay, so tags, of course, is gonna be how we're gonna tag everything. And I'm gonna keep it incredibly simple at first. I'm gonna go ahead and do class, and I'll call this tagged item just to go off of what's in the documentation. Not so much that I would actually use this myself, I would probably just call it tag, uh, but I do wanna use the documentation because I think there's a lot of explanation that goes on in the documentation that might be worth reading later. And this will give you a good example of that. So models.model, and we're gonna go ahead and say tag equals to models.slug field. So here is another example of something that I wouldn't do in my final project. Instead, I would have a title and a slug referencing the slug field, title being just a title of this tagged item. But again, let's stick with what's going on in the documentation. Okay, so again, we need to actually import the content type model. Uh, so from django.contrib.contenttypes.models, we're gonna import content type. Okay, so now what we wanna do with any given tagged item, I'm gonna go ahead and now have content type as a field, and this is gonna be models.foreign key, and it's gonna to be to that content type, and then we'll go ahead and say on delete equals to models.cascade. Okay, so um, before I actually save this and implement it into my project, I'm gonna go ahead and make a middleman database here. So I'm gonna make a backup using dump data so that if I have to delete my current development database, 
I can just reload some data in there without redoing it all over again. So we'll go ahead and do dump data and I'll just call it uh, db.json. Okay, so db.json is there now. So it has my entire data. Okay, cool. Uh, so the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna illustrate something and that is how this is gonna look in the admin. So let's go ahead and now bring this into our database and we'll go into settings.py and I'll bring in tags as the app name, okay? And now we'll go ahead and run python manage.py, make migrations, and python manage.py migrate, and of course, test. Okay, cool. So uh, the tagged item itself, I'm gonna go ahead and now add it to the admin without really doing much more, right? So from.models, we're gonna import tagged item, so admin, uh, dot site dot register and the tagged item. Okay, so let's run the server and take a look at this thing. And if we go into our tagged items and go ahead and add a new one, we see that we can add a tag. So let's say comedy again. Now the tags and the categories can absolutely overlap. It's completely up to you on how you end up doing that. Uh, but now we see that, the, that we have options for content types, right? So I can actually use these options. And let's say for instance, one of my playlists I actually want to use as my default content, right? So I can go ahead and say that a TV show, okay? We hit save and continue. That doesn't actually do anything because it's just going to the general content type. So what I wanna do is augment this again and say object ID and it's gonna be models.positive integer field. Okay, so positive integer field, meaning, hey, uh, this can be one or greater. I don't think it can be set as zero with the positive integer field. I think it has to be one or greater. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and run python manage.py, make migrations. And now I'm gonna go ahead and provide a one-off default just in the migrations, and I'll just use the number one, and then I'll go ahead and do python manage.py migrate. I don't actually have any tagged items at this point. Like I didn't save this one in the database, or, oh, well, maybe I did, but either way, that doesn't really matter that much because we are gonna be changing some of those things. So now that we've got this, I have an object ID and a content type, and really I could go ahead and say get model or get uh, you know, related object, and I can actually return self dot, well, remember how we got the content type itself? So model class would be self dot content type dot model underscore class. So this I actually would call more like, I don't know, class here with a K class. And then I would return class dot objects dot get, and now ID equaling to self dot object ID. Okay, so that would then in theory give me that thing. But actually what's cool, Django has a built-in way to do this that's quite a bit more robust, okay? So what we end up doing instead of saying get related object, we can comment this one out. We can actually make a field called content object and it's gonna reference the other fields that we have in here. So the content type field, which is in this case called content type, and then the object ID field, which we reference as object ID. Now, if you had these as different names, like let's say for instance, you called this just content, then you would wanna call this content and so on, right? Same with the positive integer field. So what we put in here for this content object is a generic foreign key. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and do from django.contrib dot content types dot fields. Now we're gonna import the generic foreign key. And that is what's gonna be the field for this content object instead of this. Now, again, this actually does work. We can absolutely use this and it is valid, but we get a lot of shortcut features with this generic foreign key that we don't necessarily get with here which we'll have to talk about later. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and run python manage.py make migrations, and I get this value, right? So I get this non-existent content type. Of course, I made a mistake here. I should probably keep that as content type. 
Uh, let's try that again. And then python manage.py migrate. Uh, notice it says no changes detected. So this is not actually something that's stored in the database. It's just a way of handling uh, generic foreign keys or generic items. So I actually wanna show you how to actually handle these generic items and also how to test them in a little bit. But the idea now is I can pass in or in theory pass in um, a actual object that is you know category with an ID of one and I can reference that to this tag now, right? It's, it's very, very similar to what we've seen already with foreign keys. It just adds another layer of a field and maybe in your mind, just another layer of extraction that's kind of hard to get your mind around exactly. So hopefully the next one while we test it will help that. Um, but now we've got a general idea here as to how this is gonna work. So before we go away, let's actually take a look at the content object itself. So we'll go ahead and do tagged item admin. And this is gonna be, of course, admin and model admin. And I'll go ahead and do class meta model equals to tagged item fields are going to be our tag, the content type, the object ID, and then the actual content object. Uh, and I'm actually going to put these fields up here. I think this is where we need to put it from now on. Uh, older versions of Django were a little bit different than that. Okay, cool. Uh, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and add in also our read only fields and put that in, oops, no no underscore here, but rather just like that. And just put in our content object and I'll add in our admin item here. Okay, so save that and we'll run the server. Okay, great. And now back into our tagged item. Um, notice now with playlist of TV show, you know, selected and then object ID selected, I actually get the office, right? So if I change this to two, um, none, right? So there is no object that exists that's related to playlists with the object ID of one, right? But there is one for one. And I could also, you know, change this. What about videos? What if I change the videos and hit save and continue? Well, it actually gets that video object of one. What if I did a hundred? Like at this point, I don't actually have that. Um, but now I actually have a really cool way to actually write out content or change content based off of this generic foreign key. And I didn't actually add this tagged item on any of these content objects. So what I can do to extend this is actually add a reference on the actual model itself back to these tags. So there is a reverse relationship. There, there's definitely a way to do that. Uh, so that's what we'll do also very soon. Uh, but this is actually, I think, one of the coolest things that Django adds uh, as a layer that really adds and extends from the many-to-many -many field and the foreign key uh, field as well. So let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, see you in the next one.